Hey folks, welcome back into CIO Insight here on the PulseNetwork.com. I am Tyler Pybert. Time to get to the guest. Yes, we have some uh, very good guests, solid guests to say the least, lined up for today's show. And one of them comes by way of Keynote Systems. We welcome to the show uh, Vic Chaudhary. He is the Vice President of Product Management and Corporate Development. A nice title there over at Keynote Systems. So uh, Vic, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you. Good. Good. How are you? I am very well. Actually, I, I had the pleasure to uh, meet some gentlemen. Uh, from Keynote Systems just last week at the Storage Developer Conference. So, you know, it was a pleasure meeting some of the, the people from your team. So tell them thank you so much. Appreciate the great time. <laughs> well, super. Well, it's good to e-meet you as well. <laughs> Without a question. So, Vic, you know, for, for the folks out there that are unaware of exactly what Keynote Systems is, kind of explain it. Break it down for me just a little bit. Sure. What we do is we monitor the cloud. And what that means is that if you're an enterprise, and you've got any kind of web or mobile web initiative, your corporate website, web applications, your internal applications, uh, or third-party web services that you use to run your website, we monitor all of that. We make sure it's up, it's running, it's fast, and ultimately the end user experience is really good. That's what we do. Okay, hi Vic, it's Eric Lundquist, how are you? Great Eric, good to, yeah. good to see you again. Yeah, on, uh, so there's monitoring the cloud, but I think if, if, even if we took a step back in terms of everyone's, a lot of people in the enterprise looking at their data centers, considering moving those data centers to a cloud, you know, basically, why should you do that? That's a great question, and there's a very, very simple answer to that. Most enterprises that are looking at the cloud and they want to be able to move the data centers to the cloud do it for two reasons. One is cost, and the other is to improve the user experience. So, you know, let's take a look at, let's talk about cost, for example. Um, I have, uh, I took some, looked around and got some data on how much web powerhouses spend on their IT costs versus a typical enterprise. And what you're looking at up, up here on the screen is the costs divided by four different categories. So let me just walk you down the, those categories. First, on the left-hand side, we're looking at WAN costs, bandwidth, servers, virtualization slash storage, and applications. Now we'll take a look at four web powerhouses. YouTube, Google, Amazon, and Salesforce. If you go back to that previous slide, you'll see that we'll compare the costs for those four companies to Bechtel, which is one of the largest engineering organizations in the world. Now, back in 2008, when Bechtel was looking at moving its data center to the cloud, they actually did this comparison and came up with these numbers. For the WAN or bandwidth, it cost YouTube somewhere between $10 and $15 per megabit, whereas for Bechtel, it was over four or $500. Google hires one systems administrator to manage 20,000 servers. Bechtel, at that time, had one systems administrator for 100 servers. And it goes on. Storage. Amazon can offer you storage, and it costs you 15 cents per gigabyte per month. For Bechtel, it was closer to $3.75. And finally, for applications, somebody like a Salesforce that does your sales automation applications in the cloud, they have one version that runs all the time, and they have over a million users using it. So, Vic, so, so, Vic, so Vic, you convinced me. I'm going to move my data center to the cloud. What, uh, <laughs> what, what does it take to do that? All right. So, in order to do that, you really have to start off with how do you, what's the goal? For Bechtel, it is all about creating a Google like experience. It takes, if you contact your help desk and you want an email account set up, well, it could take about a day or half a day. But on Google Gmail, you could set up an account for your enterprise user within a minute. It just depends how fast you can click. So you start off by actually making sure that your experience is like Google's. That's one. The next thing that you want to do is look at your infrastructure and then your applications because that's really what it takes to move your entire data center to the cloud. For infrastructure, that's the easy part. If you go on to the next slide that I have over here, you'll see that moving your infrastructure to the cloud Bechtel took their 14 data centers, they moved them down to seven. It's all about power and pi, better data management. They took 30,000 square feet of usage and moved that to 2,000 square feet. They took their servers and they virtualized them so they could move up to 70% utilization. That's all about operating efficiency of the infrastructure. But the big challenges come when you move applications. And applications are a whole new beast. They're nothing like infrastructure. You have to think about system software, owning that software versus software in the cloud. You have to think about things like heavy versus light user transactions. It really is a big, big change there. 
So you make that transition, and you also now, you know, among the CIOs I, I talk to, some of them are worried that they've, they've moved not only their applications and their infrastructure to the cloud, but have they lost some responsibilities, some capabilities along the way. How do they measure and monitor sort of what's going on with those applications? And if I'm not wrong, Vic, I think that's, you know, a big chunk of the business you're in. Well, you can't you can't manage what you don't measure. So CIOs, when they're moving, any any change is happening in the organization, you always want to make sure that you measure before, during, and after. So in order to do that, companies like Bechtel and a lot of strong enterprises that are considering moving even part of the data, data center to the cloud must start with measuring the user experience, measuring everything. You want to start with measure, measuring the availability of your SaaS vendors. If you're using Salesforce, for example, to do your Salesforce automation, well, you don't own that application, so you better measure it. Is it responsive? Is it up? Is it running all the time? Is there any downtime to it? The other big finding was that 80% of enterprise users, they, they aren't working on heavy workflows. They're doing simple tasks. Look up an order. Make a purchase. These are very simple microtransactions. So you measure them. You want to make sure that it takes, you know, 5, 10, 15 seconds to measure that performance. And then ultimately, what you want to do is also measure the reliability of your infrastructure. Is the infrastructure really operating at peak efficiency? If you can do all of these things, you're keeping an eye on your infrastructure, your applications, and your end user experience, and you'll be able to manage that transition really well. And is that measurement taking place in the background? Is it adding a load into your own networks, or is it sort of invisible, but you can get a report on it every day or every week, however frequently you want to get it to be able to show your managers, here's the status of the system? Well, it depends what you're monitoring. So if you're monitoring a server and you want to monitor that, you can put software on that server, but then you have the uncertainty principle because it might actually modify your server and it may have a small effect. But if you're monitoring the end user experience, how long does it take to sign up for an application, log in and be able to do a purchase? Well, that kind of application can be monitored like Kino does from afar. And you just measure it from all over the cloud. You measure it from the locations that your users are at, and that has no impact on the application whatsoever. So, I've, you know, and some of the CIOs I've talked to, and then I'm going to hand it back to Tyler, you know, they said, well, the cloud computing, I'm not going to use the word paradigm, but the, the, the formula around it, the math around it, they've, they've, they've seen the savings they can achieve, but they think over the next year it's going to go from a savings-based reasons to new applications they can deploy, new things they'll be able to do with their cloud-based infrastructure. I mean, do you see that taking place? Absolutely. We look at companies like eBay, for example, that have significant numbers of data centers. But when they're looking at new applications that they want to build and deploy, they're starting over from scratch. You look at even companies like Netflix that have come under you know, a lot of scrutiny lately. But the, one of the innovative things they do is when they build applications, they think, how do we start all over? How do we dismantle the preconceived notions and build this for a better user experience? So we are really entering a new realm. So there you go, Tyler. It's time for you to <laughs> close up your data center and put it in the cloud. I, I was going to say, Vic, but before I let you go, I have to ask that close up the data center because some of these databases have so much data. These are massive amounts of data that we're moving and pushing into the cloud. That seems like, I mean, we've dealt with it obviously here with an awful lot of video. So for some of those people that have, you know, the legacy machines with massive amounts of data there, that is very time consuming to push it up to the cloud, isn't it? That's a great point. And you really have to look at it from an application to application perspective. So for example, if you've got users that are using that amount of data in an application every single day, let's say they're looking at some sort of a content stream and they're folks in a newsroom, well, you may not be able to move that kind of application to the cloud just yet. You might want to start with those applications that are lighter in usage, more uh, transactional in usage. So people are just coming in, making small microtransactions and then moving on. Those are the applications you want to first consider moving to the cloud. The there bigger you go, app, Tyler. make some simple you. steps. Excellent. Yeah, make it simple. That's the way to do <laughs> it. Hey, hey, Vic. Honestly, thank you so much for taking time out of the day to jump on the show with us. Really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. It's good being here. Absolutely, without a question. Good stuff, Eric. As always, it seems. I tell you, you become more of a nerd every time you go to the West Coast <laughs> and come back, Tyler. Every time I venture to the Silicon <laughs> Valley, I come back knowing just a little bit more. Anyways, we're going to take a quick break, but we've got a lot more CIO insight coming your way right here on thepulsenetwork.com. The Pulse Network. It's social TV.